G'day and welcome to another video of A Legal Studies Teacher Reads the News. Hopefully this is going to be a bit quicker today. I'm looking at a contemporary example of an issue that we are having at the moment with people working from home. This is what it says. It's by Lucy Cormack in the Sydney Morning Herald. It says, absolute perfect time for cyber criminals to attack as businesses work from home. Attempts by cyber criminals to defraud Australian businesses whose thousands of employees are now working from home have increased more than tenfold since the outbreak of the deadly coronavirus. Okay, so that's that's a huge statistic. It was happening X number of times. It's now happening 10 times as many as that. Malicious emails from suppliers, including fake invoices and false changes to banking and phone details in the first three months of this year, are up 15 times on the same period last year. The figures from Digital Payment Security Business, EFT Shore, relate to more than 300 businesses which receive a communication from more than 1.2 million suppliers. In the past two weeks, cybersecurity experts have recorded a 40% increase in phishing lures or scam emails using COVID-19 to target victims. When people are working at home, either on their own systems or corporate systems, they are more vulnerable to phishing attacks, said Michael Connery, Chief Executive of Research and Advisory Firm Security in Depth. Their personal systems might not be patched properly. They might not have the latest antivirus software. Some hackers on the dark web say now is the absolute perfect time to attack. Security and depth found the increase in phishing lures was evidence of cyber criminals capitalizing on the overwhelming amount of COVID-19 related content now being shared online. In a survey of 520 Australian businesses last week, the research firm found 70% of emails were related to the virus outbreak. Meanwhile, around 4,000 COVID-19 related domain names have been registered online since the start of the year. A recent report by threat intelligence analyst Recorded Future found. Many of these domain names have been linked to scam emails using trusted organizations like the World Health Organization and the US Center for Disease Control and Prevention to get users to open attachments or click on the link, the report said. In Australia, cyber criminals have utilized fake MyGov websites and text messages to capitalize on the thousands of Australians now seeking urgent financial support after losing their jobs overnight. Mr. Connery added that the healthcare sector, in particular hospitals, needed to be mindful of potential scams and ransomware attacks at a time when resources were already stretched. Last year, Victoria's major regional hospitals were targeted by a sophisticated ransomware attack, which ultimately forced healthcare providers offline. Okay, so that's starting to talk about another attack, but Let's start with this first bit and just have a think about this and what it tells us about consumers as an option. Remember, our principal focus is through the use of contemporary examples, students investigate the legal rights of consumers and the effectiveness of the law in achieving justice for consumers. The theme you're going to be thinking of in order for this story is, I would say, the effectiveness of legal and non-legal responses in achieving justice for consumers. That's because we've got a, a new a uh, very scary situation happening at the moment with COVID-19. And there are, at the moment, huge problems with consumer redress and remedies when it comes to, uh, well, you kind of talk, talk, talk about awareness and self-help, the idea of these attackers um, making the point or making the most of the opportunity of people working in a new environment, people working without... The, the usual security measures around themselves. They're working from home and they don't have their bursa or whoever's in charge of their accounting uh, at work to check on things. So it's a perfect time as well as a whole bunch of people losing jobs and needing financial support. And so fishers, people pretending to be someone else are gonna make the most of these opportunities. And they're really going to, to kind of come at people hard and fast and they'll do it a lot in the hope that a few people fall for it. So the question you want to ask yourself using this example is, how is the government going to respond? So it's this question of what are the, uh, how effective are the legal and non-legal responses to this concept? What are they going to do? How are they going to understand and go, we need to make sure that we're protecting consumers in this scary COVID-19 scenario. And also how are we ensuring that we can be effective in ensuring that scams don't kind of make people lose all of their money? How do we improve the security of networks? How do we improve the education of uh, consumers who are working from home and who are unaware of a whole bunch of these, these issues?
Okay, so this is a, a really interesting case study, especially with the numbers that we're talking about here. This concept of how many tenfold increases and 15 fold increases here, 15 times as many in the first three months of this year as last year, malicious emails from suppliers of fake invoices and false changes to banking. Okay, so, so a really nice summary looking through with some great statistics, you know, this EFT Shore business, they've got 1.2 million suppliers. So we're talking big numbers here. We've got a 40% increase in fishing lures. We've got the, uh, the cyber uh, survey of 520 Australian businesses found 70% of emails related to the virus outbreak. 4,000 related domain names. Okay, so great statistics that you can use in an essay when you're thinking about the effectiveness of the legal and non-legal responses to this problem. And I'm sure if you keep looking, you will find more and more of these articles popping up when people start losing money to them, when people start saying to the government, what are you going to do about this issue? How are you going to tighten security around networks? How are you going to educate people? How are we going to, as banks, for example, offer um, people a redress when they've lost money, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so hopefully that's a quick example to show you uh, what you can do as a legal studies student reading the news and thinking about how it applies to the syllabus and applies to doing your HSC in legal studies.